we are going to, uh, to Zimbabwe because Zimbabwe is one of the poorest countries in the world. Out of Massif we invest in these uh, countries to stimulate economic development and to uh, empower entrepreneurs to, uh, to build a better world. It's by investing into uh, financial intermediates that then invest in uh, small and medium sized enterprises. We're going to meet with a uh, private equity firm, which is a small uh, firm based in Harare, which invests in local uh, companies with uh, private equity needed to build these companies. We're going to meet with a leasing company, uh, which primary core business is to lease equipment that companies of course need to produce and to grow their businesses. And we're going to meet with a bank. The Dutch Massif Fund is active worldwide in countries where access to financial services is low, focusing on Asia, Latin America and Africa. Our long-term goal is to improve the livelihood of people at the base of the pyramid through job creation and income generation. Since Massif started in 2006, we have reached out to a million small and medium-sized entrepreneurs through our work with local partner financial intermediates. Yeah, we created uh, Massif because uh, we feel that financial inclusion, access to financial services, uh, is key for entrepreneurs and for individuals in, in developing countries if they want to take charge of their own lives. We did this for the uh, first period and it was very successful and, and we saw that we were achieving very good results um, in terms of jobs and in terms of financial access uh, for the poor, for farmers, for women. Um, that we felt uh, this is a very good instrument, it's achieving results, uh, let's scale this up. But the Massive Fund is a specific fund to take more risk and uh, be more innovative uh, on financial uh, innovation than, uh, than the rest of the portfolio. Uh, and that's why we uh, chose to set up this fund. I enjoy the people, I'm a people person. Even though I'm officially a numbers person, I'm a people person because it's only through people that you get the work done. So the most exciting thing about my work at the moment is actually seeing the improved performance of, of the portfolio companies. Two of our biggest uh, portfolio companies, which is Keynes and Lobels, when we got involved in them, they were insolvent. Basically, there was no production, nothing was happening. And now we're happy to see that two years after our involvement, they're now at a, in a steady state, they're now performing well, and we're just really excited about what's next to come for them. It's quite an exciting time for us because after the first two years of hard slog, you're starting to see you know, that, that expected recovery. So we're quite, we're quite excited about that. Aside from the financial support from FMO through Massive, we are quite um, happy about the assistance on our environmental, social and governance elements. We're really talking about how our portfolio companies should not be doing any harm to the environment, how they need to be a, a social citizen contributing to the society. Through um, Massive, we've had um, the, you know, be, we've been able to plug in to sort of best in class uh, practices and guidelines and not only did they help us at the beginning to set it up but they keep helping us to ensure that we had kept up to date with uh, you know all the ongoing practices and guidelines so that's very important to us. Lobos is the second biggest bread manufacturer in Zimbabwe. So the joy of it is that it's a living product. This is a product that evolves every single day. Now with the challenges we have in the economy, with for, for, uh, forex and um, with the price of raw materials escalating, it becomes very, very difficult to then uh, manage that um, the price that we give out to consumers. So we are constantly then looking at how ways to innovate, ways to remain relevant and make sure that we remain accessible uh, and available to our consumers. We were the first ones to launch a half loaf um, into the market. Uh, consumers responded very well to it. I'll give an example of how Takura has um, helped with uh, diversification within this business. Um, we have seen more women in management coming into management where previously the business did not have any women in um, management positions and we have continued on that stance. The first thing that makes me happy is knowing that 
we've overcome the challenges of the day and we're ready and we've gone out and we're going to serve and people are going to have bread on their tables, locals bread on their tables every morning. So that makes me happy. But the crucial fact is, is that we understand our markets and we have profound knowledge of the countries we are active in. We do a lot of work and due diligence knowing our potential clients very well. It's not an easy process and we are there for the long term as well. But if you manage that risk well and knowing your customer well, you can make a return. It is not always easy. Um, if you have seen over the last decade, uh, we, have challenging, we have had challenging times. But so far, we have a very uh, decent and positive return. So when you look at the Ken story, um, Ken's Foods, it's a turnaround story, it's a recovery story. And it's an old business, so the business was started in 1947. But it's a business that um, we, we are custodians of brands that people have grown up with and people love those brands. And when this kind of company um, took a turn for the worse, uh, a lot of people felt deprived because you know brands don't belong to the companies anymore, they belong to, to the consumers, the, the people that, that choose them and buy them every day. And so my coming in and being given the custodianship to, to lead this company and to work with these brands makes me feel that I'm making a difference. You know, you, you touch a brand, you put it back on shelf or you improve it and you get people saying to you thank you. People are thanking you for doing your job. As we go around the factory, you'll see that there's a lot of work going on. We are investing back into the company. We have got a shareholder who's allowed us to do the programs that I talk about which matter. Uh, the programs with um, agriculture. Uh, and so we've got a shareholder who's looking forward in terms of building a sustainable business. Beyond that, building a business which actually uh, is giving back um, to, to Zimbabwe, to the community. And so that's really what um, the, the Takura Group has done for us. I think they've gone over and above just being a shareholder that brings funding to the table. This is the first year, 2017, in, yeah, in the last um, two decades or so, where we've got enough food to feed ourselves. So despite all the, um, the things which are going wrong, there's a couple of things going right. And if a country can feed itself, then actually that's the first step towards recovery. And I think we've taken that first baby step. I do think going forward, we, we will continue to be able to feed ourselves and therefore have a little bit more money to spend on other things which can you know, turn this country around. I do believe that um, we will be one of the shining stars of Africa in the next 10 to 15 years. Zimbabwe has a lot of opportunities, but is struggling economically. And I was um, actually proud of the fact that FMO has stayed in Zimbabwe and has been supporting Zimbabwe for years, while other uh, institutions and other embassies have left. So FMO has been able to, to increase the access to finance for SMEs, and especially the massive funds they, their objective is actually to, to, look f to, to work on sustainable development and growth. Yes, so that, and that's actually also one of the policies that, um, from our Ministry of Foreign Affairs. I think they're big banks that used to uh, provide certain services, but they pulled out of the market and they left a very big gap in terms of um, clearance, in particular of US dollar transactions. So I would say they, they tell us that between 70 and 80 percent of the economy is actually controlled by the you know, SMEs and the informal um, you know, companies. So as a bank, any serious bank, you cannot be a bank without actually tapping into that market because the FMO fund specifically for us is actually uh, you know, uh, being utilized in the SME space. Now besides just looking at SMEs, we've also went on to split that feather. We've got a desk that looks at women entrepreneurs, what are their requirements, and then we try and tailor products specifically to actually target them. The youth, again, is a key you know, uh, constituents within our you know, thrust for, for lending. The investment themes of Massif are the unbanked, fragile and least financially penetrated countries, agricultural and rural livelihood development, women including young entrepreneurs and innovations in inclusive business. I 
FMO is often the first investor in a financial institution. What we do with our technical assistance program is to make a stronger and more resilient financial institution, thereby also mitigating the risk. And if that is established, that attracts other investors. And that means there is more funding, more money available for our microfinance entrepreneurs and small, medium sized companies that they can start their business and that they have an opportunity to improve their livelihoods. African Century Limited provides financing to companies, uh, small to medium enterprises, uh, to buy equipment, uh, machinery, um, to mechanize their businesses. I'm very passionate about Zimbabwe and particularly African Century has contributed greatly to the development of our country, particularly in the agricultural sector, which is very important. It's the backbone for our economy. So FMO was the first development finance institution uh, to provide financing to ACL, long-term financing, to be able to own land to small to medium enterprises and um, through the Massif Fund. And one of the benefits of the relationship uh, with FMO uh, was that FMO was not just interested in financing us, but they also took an interest in our business, uh, in assisting us with product development uh, when we are moving on to new products. Like when we started deposit taking, um, they financed us through a consultant to come and assist us technically uh, on product development, and that was very useful. So all that has been very beneficial, and we really appreciate the partnership that we have with FMO through the Massif Fund, and we hope that it's a long-term partnership that, that can keep going on. We started with uh, one 20 hectare pivot. Now we've got nine uh, pivots and we currently cropping 300 hectares under pivot. The, one of the biggest advantages, especially for someone who's actually starting out, is uh, the issue of collateral. The arrangement that we have with ACL, the asset being funded, is actually the collateral. So for someone who's actually starting out who, who doesn't have uh, collateral, it's uh, the only way to, to start. Because if you're dealing with the other banks, all the commercial banks require collateral, it wouldn't have been possible. They also have their team that actually comes out just to check on us, whether we're actually on track, whether we also need other equipment to help us achieve our objectives. What I've been able to achieve at my age, you would not be able to achieve in other countries. I think the opportunities that we have when you compare with other countries, I don't think you'll have as many opportunities as what we have, as long as you are prepared to see the opportunity. From the outside, if you read the reports and you see the news that we are seeing about this country, uh, you get the impression that it's, uh, it's really a, a bad place. But coming here, uh, of course, it's very different. You see actually what is going on and seeing through uh, the problems that are certainly there and the difficulties that are there, I see a, a country dis that is at work, that is very entrepreneurial, very productive, very resourceful, full of good ideas and good intentions. And that is indeed what we are after and that is indeed why I think it's so important that we continue working here. Even if it's very, very difficult and, and Zimbabwe is a wonderful country, um, had a lot of things going for it in the past, so people also know it can be different. Uh, and people really hope for a change. And once the systems are in place and there's good governance and a good government that takes care of its people, Zimbabwe is one of the places uh, in Africa that can grow really fast. Mm -hmm.